Now, there's a lot of talk about the static diaphragm. We have to find out what static diaphragm means. Basically, it means the diaphragm should not move while you're singing. The problem is, how shall I keep it from moving? One is to hold it still like that, but you can hear the minute I make an action that reacts in my throat, I'm reducing my tone. Then I have to do something, lift up my palate or do something to try to get my throat free. So how do I maintain a static diaphragm without using my throat? <laughs> to be here. I'm maintaining a static diaphragm, an absolutely still diaphragm, without letting it influence my throat. It leaves my throat completely free, and I'm like this, throatless, jawless, and tongueless. This is the thing I keep repeating of that Dame Ava Turner used, uh, who was a great dramatic soprano in England, and she was saying a whole career that way, and had, of course, massive, massive high notes, especially the high C's. So, if I don't use this, and I must use something else, and I must not allow my diaphragm to move. Uh, Pavarotti is a good example. Uh, in fact, he's even got one videotape where he's demonstrating to a young man, and he says, you know, has the young man put his hand here, and then he sings, and this doesn't move. You notice I'm not doing anything here, and I'm sure not imitating anybody. I, I, uh, I wish I could imitate some of these people, these <laughs> magnificent singers and voices. So, but we got to take what we've got, and I don't think I can improve it by, by trying to imitate someone else. So if I don't imitate, what am I left with? So I'm like this. As my old teacher, Olga Rees, used to say, you must accept the leftovers, right? So I take a breath in a way that relaxes my throat. So I go, so I breathe way down on my lower back, like my buttocks and balloons. Now my throat is completely loose. I just relax my, I use that, in, that inhalation as an opportunity to relax my throat. So I go, now I'm gonna create the static diaphragm. How? There are several ways. One is to go and do a preset. Another is the miniature cough. And the idea is to sustain the tension you create. When you go, now you gotta hold that cough tension there. And I go, that's preset. I must maintain the pressure of the breath from my lower back against my diaphragm and not let it move. Then I've achieved the static diaphragm. If I just try to hold it still like this, all of a sudden it's reacting in my throat. This is very, very important difference, right? Sometimes here comes a note, you'll do any darn thing to get the note, and sometimes you end up halfway choking, but you didn't get the note. See? Sometimes you crack. Uh, because you did not crack goes, but the voice sips into fall said, ah, it'll do that because you didn't hold it static. You let it suddenly relax and move and the breath cut off, right? If I want to yell like, what am I doing? I'm relaxing the diaphragm, sending the air up. But in classical singing, and hopefully all the good uh, contemporary singers do not let air slip through their throats. We know about Adele having to retire at age 29, and that's not a thing in the world that hanging a Kleenex in front of her throat, a tissue paper like this, and let her vocalize without moving the paper, and she could maintain her career. You know, I wish I had her for half an hour. But anyway, you take a deep breath, you pull your tummy in, you put the breath way down here like this, you go, then I do a preset. That's a preset method for maintaining the stillness of the diaphragm. Right? Breathe, same way. Miniature cough. If I hold that slight cough pressure, Manuel Garcia called that the mini cough, the miniature cough. So if I maintain the pressure of the cough, as long as I can hold it static, my back squeezes together like this and sends the breath against my diaphragm to replace air that is being lost uh, as, it, as it's being used up. And it's somewhat complicated. I went through this with the, with the pulmonologist. It's a somewhat complicated process, but somehow 
uh, we can figure it out if we just are willing to breathe, 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 breathe all the time. We have to breathe a certain way, that's all. Breathe in, there goes my tummy inward, see that? And now I'm going to do a miniature cough. And I can sing any kind of music that way. See? I'm holding it dead still. I'm not letting it move. That's static diaphragm. Remember, it is never like this. It is never. If I do this, I'm going to have to do something in my throat to get some sound out. Because that, the, the tense one, uh, very famous singer who's had a long career, I think he's 77 now, presses out of his abdomen at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> and it made his voice do that all the time. But he, made a, he was able to sing, you know. And if you like the sound, great. See, I, I, uh, I would say the modern singers, I like Pavarotti the best because Pavarotti would, he had a kind of a speech phonation. He, he'd breathe, and then he said, hold this very still, and he'd go, Forza la salia dinze, e bozaldin. And that's all. You just hold it there and you don't move. See? Breathe. In van, in van, ascondo la mia vera tortura. I'm not moving my diaphragm. I'm holding it dead still. Uh, certain singers hold find the static diaphragm, but to do it with shallow breathing. Let's say I breathe up here. Now hold it still. Ah, 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 ah. My voice is suddenly smaller and lighter and a little bit more dominated by the nasal quality, but I can sing that way. If I could breathe lower down, I'd get hold static and go it's a different sound, especially in the back of a theater or an orchestra. See, so one opens your, your megaphone. You've got a megaphone built to back of your throat called the pharynx. In fact, you've got an upper pharynx and a lower pharynx. And then you have a tracheal opening. Some people use tracheal only, and they usually get in terrible vocal trouble. So we don't want to think about that. We want to just learn how to talk on this still diaphragm, right? So I'm going to take a deep breath. Now I'm going to sigh. Oh. I'm going to sigh behind my sternum, which is right here. I'm going to go, oh, happy sigh, oh, sad sigh, oh. But the, 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 the diaphragm is static because I'm dropping the breath on it and it's not moving. So I go, oh, and while I'm singing, I do that. I go, oh. I'm just sighing against my diaphragm and I'm maintaining a perfectly still, modern word, static diaphragm. Still is a better word. It's the old word and it's still a better word. So keep it still. Don't let it move. If you, if you can help it. If you move it, I get, ah, ah, ah. you hear this, this sort of surging in the sound. Uh, then there's the staccato method. I take a breath and I go, Ha, 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 ha. Now I've energized my breath so I can do staccato. You have to do it in the fast. Ha, 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 ha. Don't go ah, ah, ah. That's a whole different process. Go ha, 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 ha. See what I'm doing? I made my breath go ha, ha. Now I hold it still. I go ha, 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 ha. Say my God, Carmen, the Timoki de moi. I'm holding my diaphragm still, and on the inside, I used a staccato pulse, and I located my, my, uh, my pulse. Oh, oh, where's my staccato pulse? Oh, 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 oh. I hold it there, and keep it still all the time, and then I can sing. See? What if I sing big, some kind of big dramatic music? Then I breathe, and I go, huh? And now I've in, I'm intensifying my, my uh, preset. <laughs> if I want to make a heavier declamation, but, you know, I've sung all that stuff, but I wouldn't recommend it if it's the kind where you have to sing that way all night long. That's why I never did Siegfried or Tristan or Tannhäuser. I got offered those parts, but I never did them.
I like the ones that you hit a few big notes and then you back off and sing some lyric stuff for a while, right? Breathe in. Now Caruso said in his book, Do a Contrary Motion, he mentions breathing 60 times in 32 pages in the Dover edition of his book. 60 times in 32 pages. He was obsessed with breathing. How do you breathe? Pull the abdomen in and breathe down your lower back and let your, and let your chest rise. So I'm going to go. And then he said, do a contrary motion. Now, that means I'm going to be dropping out the whole time against my diaphragm, but I can't let my diaphragm go out to here. I have to still maintain a stillness in front of leaning it. The wall, if I lean on the wall, the wall is still. If I lean here on the piano, the piano's not moving. See? So if I do lean, if I do do a contra, uh, if I do apujati, which means to lean, which if I do a contrary motion, I go, and then I go like this. Ah, uh, ah, uh, see that? Ah, la 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 against a still diaphragm and it's contrary to the way I inhaled. So the, the whole secret is to breathe in here. A lot of singers bend over. Breathe down here, right? A lot of them do yoga. A lot of them do swimming every day. Uh, Hedger Lonsvenia did uh, yoga three hours a day. Caruso did the 40-step walk every day. Ten steps breathing in, ten steps hold, em uh, hold full. Ten steps blowing out and ten steps holding empty. And he did it for an hour and a half a day, according to his secretary. So if you do that, you breathe, and you go, ah, 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 a lean. It gets to be a gravity technique after a while. I'm not floating off into space. So why isn't the gravity lean enough lean? Why can't I just lean against? So Tetrasini said, take a deep breath in your lower back and then prop it up against your sternum the way you would prop a ladder up against the wall. Well, how's that for a static lean? The wall is static and the lean is placed against that wall. So I breathe and I go, Ah, see? Ah, I'm just going, huh. right? If I want to sing, uh, I, I did a video a while ago on contemporary music. If I want to go, oh, woman, oh, woman, why you treat me so mean? Were you the meanest woman that I've ever seen? It's all about leaning, and the Italian word, by the way, is appoggiare, to lean. They never use the word support. That's an English usage that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I don't hold anything up. If you follow me, I'm supporting you. That's not what I do. I'm the person that falls on you and you're holding me up. See? So I'm doing, I'm taking my breath and I'm leaning my breath this way. Huh. Now you can call it support in the sense that I'm leaning on my diaphragm, but my diaphragm is, feels passive. It feels like I'm just there. And the back, closes, Caruso said the back squeezes together to support this contrary motion. So I breathe. So when I go to a high note, I go, ah, and all I'm doing is going the opposite of what I want to breathe in. I breathe behind me. That's Richard Tucker. Breathe behind you and sing in front of you. So I go, ah, ah. Right? And that's what I do. What am I doing? The breath is behind me, and then all of a sudden I lean it forward, and my back starts to squeeze the support, and my throat does nothing, and my tongue is like uh, non existent. Uh, Ava Turner called it all the invisible throat, the invisible tongue, the invisible jaw. So I shouldn't be using anything up here. The modern school is to go from here up and go and create formants. And the old school was to do nothing from here up and breathe. And that's how I created my formants.
See? By breathing. The breathing affects the soft palate. The soft palate changes position on every vowel, at every volume, on every pitch. It all depends on where I am in my voice and what vowel I'm singing and how loud I'm singing. It has all kinds of... It really should be very flexible and be able to move instead of modifying it into one function. Then you have the yin yang yin school. I'm happy. I'm sad. I'm angry. I hate you. I love you. Let's be friends. Let's be enemies. You can't change the color of your voice at all. See? Whereas you can perfectly well if you're afraid. I call you on the phone. You say, hello. I say, what's the matter? You say, what are, you, are you all right? What's wrong? You say, hello. So what you do? Win the lottery? I hear it in your speaking voice immediately if you're happy or sad or angry or something. If I know you, for sure. But even most people, even not knowing people, you will get a tone of voice out of people. But if you train someone to sing like dance, uh, 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 I guess what? They, all, they sound happy, sad, or angry? No. They just sound nasal, right? And this whole area is the false mask. It's too low. You know, if I sing there, I go, mm -hmm. too low. I should be ba 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 ba. I should be above my nose. I should not be singing through my nose at all, except when I sing N or N G or, or M. Then the nose quickly opens, makes the consonant. And then it goes right, the resonance goes right back up where it belongs. So I, I, I want to talk about the, di, the st static diaphragm. we got to get that clear. Static has to mean squeeze and hold. Static means breathe in, behind you, lean the breath, sigh the breath, contrary motion, preset, miniature cough. You've got all these staccato. <laughs> you have all these ways to attach your voice, your breath, to your diaphragm. And then the diaphragm must not move. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. And then I can talk anywhere in my voice. How are we going to be? I'm fine. Why don't we go downtown? Let's get something to eat. You can understand every word I'm saying. So I don't have to worry about my diction at all. In any language. See? All I'm doing is leaning and going, huh, and then holding my diaphragm absolutely still. So, uh... Someone said, uh, oh, no, no, don't breathe like that. No, no, don't breathe. Just hold your diaphragm still. Uh, if, you got, if, you, if you were born, if you have genetic DNA or something that gave you a rib cage this size, it works great. But if you're a normal person, a normal singer, historically, everybody did breathing exercises all the time. All the time. Every day. They walk around doing them all the time. See? Why? Because most of us want to get, the bigger the drum, the bigger the sound. So most of us want to have sufficient power and color and stamina to be able to sing some of this very difficult music we sing, you know? People know that really don't know. They talk a lot, but until they've sung Meister Singer five and a half hours of a 130-piece orchestra playing, playing loud, they don't really know what it means to, to, to survive that kind of evening. And a lot of the big tenor roles, I mean, Don Carlo was four hours long, you know? You think about the operas. I did Parsifal and Flying Dutchman. I did some, you know, Queen of Spades and Tchaikovsky is a, is a monster. It's so huge, right? Uh, when you do those, you, you're not going to be doing this kind of thing all night. You're going to go, huh. Then if you don't have enough voice that way, you shouldn't sing the role. If my voice is too small that way, then I shouldn't sing the part. See? Breathe in. Why, they offered me Otello. I, in fact, I nearly sang it in Wiesbaden in 1966, and I, I, I injured my rib cage playing touch football, believe it or not. Somebody tackled me, and I, and I, and I had to cancel. So th that was the closest I ever came to singing Otello, thank goodness. But I was stupid and young and, you know, didn't know. But anyway, I found out. So you take a breath, and you go, huh, or one of your attack methods, ah, uh, sigh, ah, uh, and now I'm going to try to sing Otello that way. Ora per sempre addio, santa memoria. Well, in some smaller theaters or something, or maybe even on the big scene if there's nobody else available, I can have a career singing that if I can sustain it. One of my favorite singers is a guy named uh, Roy Cornelius Smith. And he sings Otello, and he's got a great big lyrical spinto voice. Maybe it's a spinto now because he's so strong, but he's, he's been a great singer. And uh, he sang in Mannheim, sang in Germany a long time, sang all the big stuff, and I just love him. Uh, and now I think he's singing Frauen und Schatten and all these, some of these really big pieces. And they are incredibly uh, in, uh, difficult in terms of stamina. But when I asked Giovanni Martinelli, Martinelli at age 77, the one that took Caruso's place at the Met when Caruso died, 
Uh, I said, what did your teacher tell you? And he says, this, this was 19, what, this was about 1962. And he was already 77 or something then. And he said, qui respirare, here breathe, e qui postare, and here place the voice, here lean the voice. So you take, they, they knew it back then. You breathe, and then you go, huh. It all depends on which one of these attachment methods you want to use. They used to call it punto d'appoggio, the point of leaning, and they called it a punto uh, d'attachmento, the point of attachment. They had all these names. They used to use the point of phonation, which was, <laughs> and my vowel is, I don't know where my vowels are, they're sitting way back here. <laughs> because if I do this, I get a corresponding deep phonation. <laughs> I'm not going, eh, 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 eh. I'm just relaxing my throat and going, <laughs> I do that. <laughs> You can understand every word I'm saying. And it's just as easy as talking if the breath is right. So I hope this static diaphragm, I hope that's clear. Don't keep it still by squeezing it. That's the wrong concept, okay? Bye.